welcome back viewers so in today's video we are going to discuss in detail about the palmar aponeurosis so if you remember my last video in my last video i told you the deep fascia of the palm it is modified at places it is thickened at places to form the flexor retinaculum to form the palmar aponeurosis and the fibrous flexor sheets of the digits okay so it is modified to form the flexor retinaculum palmar aponeurosis and the fibrous flexor sheets of the fingers so today we are going to discuss this palmar aponeurosis in detail so we are going to discuss this under introduction and its structure its functions its morphology and its applied aspects so coming to the introduction part so as i told you palmar aponeurosis is nothing but a modification or the thickening of the deep fascia in the palm so why it has to be present is we have got important vessels and nerves in the palm which need protection and few muscles will take origin from this palmar aponeurosis and this palmar aponeurosis helps to keep the tendons in position at it and it will prevent the bow stringing of the tendons okay so uh, for that reason the deep fascia of the palm it is modified to form the palmar aponeurosis so this palmar aponeurosis see you see this is the palmar aponeurosis so it has got three parts coming to its structure it has got three parts so the part in the center center which is thicken we are referring to this as palmaris palmar aponeurosis proper okay and medial and lateral side you have got the medial and lateral parts of the palmar aponeurosis but the central part which is thicken and triangular in shape is what we are calling as palmar aponeurosis proper okay so we are going to discuss about the central part first the central part it is very thicken thicken the lateral part and the medial part which is there they are thin they are thin and the lateral part of the palmar aponeurosis will cover the thenar muscles and medial part will cover the hypothenar muscles so why is it thinned out in order to allow for the movements movements of this uh, bones which are present below that so that is why over the medial and lateral margins it is thinned out okay so we are going to discuss about this palmar aponeurosis proper or the central part of the palmar aponeurosis this is triangular in shape it is triangular in shape you can see here this is triangular in shape with its apex directed proximally and base directed distally towards the bases of the fingers so base is directed towards the base of the fingers and apex is directed proximally okay so what are the attachments so this apex which is there this apex it will blend with flexor retinaculum it will blend with flexor retinaculum and it becomes continuous with the tendon of palmaris longus so what is this palmaris longus this is a muscle of the flexor compartment of the forearm okay anterior it's a muscle which is present in the anterior compartment of the forearm so if you remember we have seen that the tendon of palmaris longus will pass superficial to the flexor retinaculum so this is what we were talking about okay so uh, the apex it is blending with the flexor retinaculum and becoming continuous with the tendon of palmaris longus so what is happening to the base the base on reaching the bases of the fingers on reaching the bases of the fingers it is dividing into four digital slips four digital slips for the medial four fingers four digital slips for the medial four fingers so again these digital slips will again redivide into superficial and deep you can see here they are dividing into superficial and deep so it is dividing into four digital slips again 
these are dividing into superficial slip and a deep slip okay now what is happening to the superficial slip this is the superficial slip this superficial slip it will blend with the dermis dermis of the skin dermis of the overlying skin and it will blend with the superficial transverse ligament of the palm you can see this one so it will blend with the dermis and superficial transverse ligament of the palm now what happens to the deep slip deep slip so the deep slip it will blend with deep transverse uh, ligament of the palm just below this just below the superficial transverse uh, uh, ligament you have got the deep transverse ligament of the palm and then it becomes continuous with the palmar ligaments of the metacarpophalangeal joints palmar ligaments of the metacarpophalangeal joints then it will blend with the bases of the proximal phalanges it will blend with the bases of the proximal phalanges and then it is continuous with the fibrous flexor sheets of the digits fibrous flexor sheets okay so that is about the deep slip so i repeat the base of the palmar aponeurosis is splitting into four digital slips for the medial four fingers again those slips are resplitting into superficial and a deep slip superficial slip is blending with the dermis and the superficial transverse ligament of the palm and the deep slip it is blending with the deep transverse ligament of the palm palmar ligaments of the metacarpophalangeal joints and it is uh, blending with the proximal phalanges bases of the proximal phalanges and becomes continuous with the fibrous flexor sheets of the digits okay now you see these are the gaps between these digital slips the gaps between these digital slips they are connected by means of transversely running fibers transversely running fibers so these are traversed by digital vessels and nerves so i have shown you here this is the artery which is running through the gap between the digital slips to in order to supply the fingers so those uh, the vessels which supply the fingers are called as digital uh, vessels and uh, the nerves which supply the fingers are called as digital nerves so through this gap the digital vessels and nerves will pass through okay so that is the structure of the palmar aponeurosis proper so the medial and lateral parts of the palmar aponeurosis i told you they are thinned out in allow in order to allow for the movements of the underlying bones and along the medial side and the lateral side or otherwise along the ulnar border and the radial border this palmar aponeurosis it will become continuous with the deep fascia of the dorsum okay so it is continuous with the deep fascia of the dorsum so that is the structure of the palmar aponeurosis so it is nothing but a modification of the deep fascia in the palm thickening of the deep fascia so what are the functions of this palmar aponeurosis so why actually this has to be present so we have seen the attachments it is uh, getting attached to the dermis and all it is getting attachment to the fibrous flexor sheets it is getting attachment to the phalanges so with this basis we should understand the functions so functions it provides attachment to the skin in order to provide a good grip okay so uh, it provides attachment to the skin because it is uh, merging with the dermis so it will improve the grip improve the grip of the hand the skin overlying skin is attached to this palmar aponeurosis so that it will improve the grip next other function we have seen this uh, palmar aponeurosis is covering the vessels and nerves of the palm okay so it is providing protection 
protection to the vessels to the vessels and nerves in the pap next so i told you it will give origin to few intrinsic muscles so on the thenar aspect thenar muscles there are four in number but hypothenar muscles there are only three in number so in order to improve the uh, grip on the uh, ulnar side it will give origin to one subcutaneous muscle this muscle which is called as palmaris brevis palmaris brevis so it gives origin to a muscle which is called as palmaris brevis so it will improve the grip of the hand next the other important function is so along the medial border and the lateral border the so palmar aponeurus is proper it will give attachment to medial and lateral intermuscular septum medial and lateral intermuscular septum of the palm okay so this medial intermuscular septum it passes from the medial border of the palmar aponeurus and it gets attached to the shaft of fifth metacarpal bone and this lateral intermuscular septum from the lateral border it will pass downwards and will get attached to the shaft of the first metacarpal bone so by the presence of these intermuscular septa the palm which is there it is divisible into spaces spaces which are surgically important so it will divide the palm into spaces which are surgically important next i told you the palmar aponeurus is giving digital slips only to the medial four fingers so but it is not giving any slip to the thumb why because in order to allow for the free movement of the thumb the palmar aponeurus is not extending to the thumb so these are all the functions functions of the uh, palmar aponeurus one is protection of the underlying vessels and nerves and uh, it improves the grip of the hand next it uh, provides origin to the intrinsic muscles and then it divides the palm into surgically important spaces okay so uh, those are the functions of the palmar aponeurus so these are the functions next we will have a look at the morphology so how actually or what actually is this palmar aponeurus so palmar aponeurus is nothing but the degenerated primitive insertion of palmaris longus so actually the palmaris longus tendon was primitively it was inserted like this so it is nothing but the degenerated primitive insertion of palmaris longus so with evolution there is a change in the insertion of palmaris longus and its primitive insertion which is there it is remaining as the palmar aponeurus so that is about the morphology how actually this palmar aponeurus is formed now <coughs> now we we'll talk about the applied aspects so any inflammation to this palmar aponeurus will cause its thickening even thickening of the palmar aponeurus so that will lead to a condition which is called as gipotrens contracture okay this is a question actually for you palmar aponeurus is a question gipotrens contracture also is a question so inflammatory thickening of the palmar aponeurus is what we are calling as gipotrens contracture so what will happen in this gipotrens contracture 
So because of the thickening of the palmar aponeurosis, they will be, it is supplying the medial four fingers and it is blending with the proximal phalanges, you remember? So because of the uh, thickening, it will contract. It will lead to a contracture. It will contract. So the fingers, they become acutely flexed, acutely flexed at the proximal phalanges and middle phalanges. But the terminal phalanges are not affected because it is not getting attached up to the terminal phalanges. Okay. So the inflammatory thickening of the uh, palmar aponeurosis will cause its contracture thus leading to acute flexion of the medial four digits. The proximal and the middle phalanges are affected but the terminal phalanges are spared. Okay. So that is about Duputrin's contracture. Mostly the ring finger is the one which is commonly affected by this Duputrin's contracture. Ring finger is the commonly affected. So that is the clinical condition which is related to this palmar aponeurosis. So with this we come to an end of this session on palmar aponeurosis. Thank you for watching.